It's no secret that the Polkadot ecosystem is rapidly becoming the most hotly anticipated and potentially transformational piece of technology that has ever been created in the blockchain world. It seems like almost every single project touching this ecosystem has gone absolutely bonkers with gains, and for good reason, because Polkadot promises to alleviate the congestion that has been so common in these blockchain networks. I mean, the transaction fees on Ethereum have gotten ridiculous, and if it wasn't for everything on Uniswap, Swap, literally pulling a thousand percent gains overnight, the entire crypto economy, if it was running on Ethereum, would be left at a standstill. And that of course raises serious question marks as to the future of Ethereum, especially without the presence of Ethereum 2.0 for scaling. But today we're going to be talking about an amazing part of the Polkadot ecosystem that is yet to go absolutely bonkers like the rest of these coins, and I believe is tremendously undervalued in the market given what Polkadot is set to accomplish. So if you guys are excited to know about the number one coin that I've just bought that is part of this Polkadot ecosystem, then do me a favor and absolutely obliterate that like button because today's video is going to be jam-packed with information about a coin that I could see pulling a very easy 10x in its run-up just to get parity with another coin in the space that's doing about the same thing. And of course with a macro bull run where Bitcoin breaks out of its 12k resistance and Ethereum breaks its $400 hold, we we could potentially see the Polkadot ecosystem, and especially this coin, balloon to incredible new heights. So if you guys are ready for the red pill, let's go ahead and check out ChainX. And as always, each and every comment on this video is entered to win a Ledger Nano S. So if you guys are interested in a free Ledger Nano, make sure you leave a comment below. Let's go ahead and discuss what's so important about Polkadot for those who are uninitiated. Polkadot development is on track to deliver the most robust platform for security, scalability, and innovation. As you can see, Polkadot promises true interoperability. Polkadot enables cross-blockchain transfers of any type of data or asset, not just tokens. Connecting to Polkadot gives you the ability to interoperate with a wide variety of blockchains in the Polkadot network. Keep this in mind because this has everything to do with the coin that we're discussing today. Polkadot provides unprecedented economic scalability by enabling a common set of validators to secure multiple blockchains, not just one blockchain. Polkadot provides transactional scalability by spreading transactions across multiple parallel blockchains. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the architecture of Polkadot, they essentially have what they call a relay chain, which is like an outer ring chain, and they have a bunch of what's called parachains. These parachains fit under the relay chain and essentially perform tasks that are delegated by the relay chain. They allow you to create a custom blockchain in minutes using the Substrate framework. The Substrate framework was developed by Gavin Wood, the co-founder of Ethereum and the creator of Parity Tech. This is coming from some of the biggest heavy hitters in the blockchain industry, and by all means, the prices are certainly reflecting the excitement around this ecosystem. They're also forkless and future-proof, meaning Polkadot can upgrade without hard forks to integrate new features or fix bugs. This capability enables Polkadot to easily adapt to changes and upgrade itself as better technologies become available. We all know that there's always something cheaper, better, faster, but imagine if Ethereum could quickly integrate the protocol features that are being touted by these quote quote unquote, Ethereum killers. The reality is that Polkadot could be the protocol disruptor. It could be the protocol of protocols, meaning that their ecosystem could essentially facilitate all the activity that we need and essentially bridge any external assets that we may want to play with in that ecosystem. So as you can see, Polkadot is mostly powered by their DOT token, which is used for governance, staking, and bonding. However, as we'll show you in a second, the DOT token is already one of the most expensive tokens in existence in the crypto space. And and while that might be very well justified, I'm here to present to you an opportunity where I see being a no-brainer for some huge gains as the Polkadot system takes flight. Chainx explains that it's breaking the barriers of assets between blockchains and building a public chain ecology of multi-currency integration. Now, you'll have to pardon some of the nomenclature on this site and in the blogs, as this was created by an almost exclusively Chinese team that's not English native, so communication directly with the team was a little tricky in making this episode 
episode, I always try to communicate directly with the team when I'm making episodes to get a deeper sense of what's coming or the news. And especially now that the channel has become so widely recognized, it's made it so I can really get a hold of people and get the best information to you guys. So if that's exciting for you guys, obviously I encourage you to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. At present, the assets of the blockchain ecosystem are trapped by their own systems. Without the ability of interchain division and collaboration, BTC has established the largest scope of consensus with low transaction efficiency. Zcash has established privacy functions without the capability of smart contracts. ETH has established smart contracts, but it cannot migrate to a POS system. Any chain can have asset interoperability with all other chains as long as it establishes a connection with Chainx. So now you see what this is. This is the bridge of the Polkadot ecosystem, allowing for assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Zcash, and more to be imported into the Polkadot ecosystem and made to flow like water in the new amazing, efficient, extremely high speed and low cost proof of stake ecosystem that is about to take flight on Polkadot. As they say here, asset is power. Chainx measures users mining power based on the market value of BTC.eth, ERC20, EOS, and other assets that are deposited by an interchain bridge. Chainx didn't organize any ICO or pre-mining event. Chainx will try to make the validators more scalable in general. So they're touting their interchain assets. Obviously, that is one of the critical things here, but it goes deeper than just transferring assets here, as we'll show you in a second with their partnership with Filecoin. A totally decentralized circulation for interchain assets. Assets are reserved by multi-sig contract or light client protocol. No one can misappropriate reserves of those interchain assets. A thousand validators, anyone can be a validator, and 0% fee. So they're allowing for decentralized exchange with no fees. This is going to be a complete revolution. Pokeswap is set to absolutely squash the current existing decentralized exchange infrastructure. Obviously, the Uniswap ecosystem has been thriving off of the back of some insane popularity and pump friendly new, mostly not really that great coins. But this DeFi craze has just been wild, and it's led to fees on the Uniswap network being absolutely impossible to tolerate. We must do better going forward. And something like this is an experience that the greater mainstream public will get behind. If Ethereum was old school stock trading, this is Robin Hood, right? This is coming along with the no free, easy to use UX experience that's going to absolutely blow these old blockchain 1.0 and 2.0 out of the water. Well, it's not going to blow them out of the water, actually. It's going to integrate them into an ecosystem where they can actually become more heavily used and it can actually go mainstream. Because if already right now, before the bull run has even started, we're seeing these kinds of exorbitant fees on Ethereum, it doesn't bode well for what would happen if we got a mainstream rush of newbies and normies. So they have a single chain system with Chainx 1.0. And this was launched in May of 2019 before Polkadot. Chainx is currently running as an independent chain and issuing PCX as the system currency. Chainx will build the most popular blockchains bridges to integrate interchain assets so that more users can participate in the interchain mining. Now they release Chainx V2, which will launch after Polkadot releases their V1, which happened in Q4 of 2019. Chainx will build a new bridge chain as Polkadot's parachain to accomplish interoperability with Polkadot's assets and will continue supporting the community to develop various dApps. After we get Polkadot V2, Chainx will split into a multi-chain architecture and run as Polkadot's level two relay network. Polkadot will focus on transmitting interchain messages and Chainx will focus on mapping interchain assets in it. The Chainx Next relay chain, it will be the high security guarantee for the whole system and responsible for the overall shared security consensus of the second layer network. Chainx will split each transaction bridge into a separate parachain to reduce pressure. So they're creating a bunch of different parachain bridges to make sure that there's not any clogs, not any congestion on any one bridge. You can think about this quite literally. Imagine a bunch of different bridges instead of just a single point of entry. You can understand how traffic can be drastically decreased. Take note, San Francisco and New York. They're also going to have their trade parachain. It will freely provide matching services for all assets in Chainx and improve transaction throughput. And they're going to have their dApp parachains. Various applications developed by the community will run independently and maintain interchain communication capabilities. And of course, with these dApps, you can imagine that all kinds of decentralized trading applications would find a very nice and welcoming home on Chainx. 
You can see here that the total amount of PCX will be 21 million, which is halved every two years. So it's kind of like Bitcoin, but they have a different halving schedule. 20% of the first two years circulation will be owned by the founding team for ongoing development. After two years, the chain will fully be owned by the community. So the founding team will only get 10% of the total. The assets BTC, ETH, etc., in ChainX that users deposit through the interchain bridge will automatically convert to PCX value according to the daily average price. Then Chainx will issue new PCX according to the total market value of the user's assets. The PCX that users mined can be used to pay for the miner's fee and validators deposits. Polkadot's investors can map the dots on Ethereum into Chainx and participate in interchain asset mining with BTC depositors. Chainx will preheat Polkadot's ecology in advance. Here's why I find this so interesting. Because as we look at this, these are all the announced Polkadot projects, the future Polkadot parachains, and this is them listed by market cap. And as we can see at the top, we have DOT, of course, the big daddy, which is 3.7 billion. Obviously, if this thing takes off and is what it seems like, this will be made to look like nothing. I think catching up to Ethereum with 30 billion, this was dependent on the expansion of the crypto community, but this thing could continue to swell. And I see this if it takes off as being a top top five cryptocurrency up there with the likes of BTC, Ethereum, and Chainlink. Of course, going down the list, we then have Energy Web Token. Essentially, the entire energy industry is going to be using this chain. This is one of the most bullish and exciting projects I think I've ever seen in my life. Next up on the list, of course, we have Ocean, which we talked about significantly, and then Kusama, which is their testnet. Then we have Edgeware, Seller, and Acro, all of which have been pumping like crazy. I know some of you are gonna bust me up on this, but to me, PCX here at 26 million or 27 million is by far the best buy on the list. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor and you need to have, as Ivan on tech would say, your big boy pants on if you're going to make any of these decisions because this is all experimental future stuff here. So you need to take full responsibility of whatever actions you make here. Obviously the first assets I looked at here were RWS and XRT. Now the reason why I liked RWS and XRT are of course, tiny market caps and I really Really like these projects and I think I might do a review on them in the future. I might get a little bit of the bags. However, the thing about it is XRT and RWS are actually the same project. Uh, this is the Robonomics project. This is their Robonomics web services token on the top. And then this is their real-time transaction token XRT. So essentially they have like an impulsive token where you can access their, their network for sort of single time use transactions. And then they have their subscription based token that'll have predictable sort of batched transactions. Uh, it's just two different token models. I'm a big believer that robotics are gonna be an industry that takes over by storm in the future. However, there are a lot of players that are going to be wanting to get their hands in on this game, and nothing really in particular makes me feel confident that Robonomics is going to be the main player or any of the main players in this industry. And just the fact that they're here first is interesting. They could get just a crypto hype pump like a lot of these coins are getting. It's definitely a very legit project. However, I just don't see the use case being all that overwhelmingly necessary in the near term. This is something that's for like smart cities of the future, IoT of the future, and while it might become increasingly relevant over this decade, I don't see this as something that's going to truly pump my bags tomorrow. Katen is actually the reward token for Ring, so you can kind of group those projects together. And essentially just wrapping these up, Oaks and Doc, to me, Doc is about credentials and Oaks is about providing liquidity. I think they're both interesting, but compared to what Chainx is doing and especially how it's positioned in the market, compared to another project that I'm a very big fan of, RenVM, I could see this project doing absolutely monstrous growth. Chainx is sitting right now at just $27 million in market cap. And of course, for you who are looking for those tiny little babies who have never even pumped before, nope, this is not quite one of those. However, Chainx is an integral aspect of the Polkadot ecosystem, bridging assets into the Polkadot ecosystem that would otherwise not be able to play. And so Chainx's role as a bridge can't be overstated. This is an absolutely critical aspect of Polkadot's multi-billion dollar project, which I believe, if it starts to take off and show success, will reach the tens of billions of dollars in 
no time. And that, of course, will drag with it one of its most critical parts way, way higher than just $27 million. Now, here's a Q&A with Chainx's lead developer. Chainx is the world's first Polkadot ecological chain and the first officially launched blockchain network based on substrate technology, which is, of course, the technology that underpins the entire Polkadot ecosystem. King Huan, which is an amazing name, by the way, explains, as the first domestic substrate chain, Chainx is currently the world's largest Bitcoin layer two network and has been making efforts for the new ecosystem of Bitcoin. Chainx's positioning is Bitcoin's ecological portal. As a cross-chain asset gateway, Chainx will inevitably become the first successful application platform for Bitcoin, which will bring Bitcoin to Ethereum-like functions, including DeFi, Stablecoin, DApp, and other applications. Now, to be fair, Bitcoin is already being wrapped on Ethereum, so that is not entirely true. But let's be honest, there are huge problems right now with Ethereum. So bringing it into an environment where it has completely high throughput and actually is in kind of like the Ethereum of the future, that is something that we can only be extremely excited for. With the development of the BTC smart contract ecosystem, we will build a Web 3.0 era where the underlying digital goal the upper value of the internet and the value flow freely from chain to chain through the asset gateway. In what should come as no surprise, two mainstays of the Polkadot ecosystem, Acropolis, which if you guys were watching this channel, you would have been part of that astronomical pump that Acropolis had because we covered it before that pump happened, and Chainx have partnered to advance cross-chain interoperability for Polkadot. Obviously, you know by now how Chainx is set up. So Acropolis believes that Chainx consistent and top quality quality work on Polkadot will be essential for the ecosystem forming around the protocol. So if you're wondering who's some of the heads of the Polkadot ecosystem, Chainx is without a doubt one of the most integral parts of this ecosystem as they're seeing others try to emulate and build off of their quality of work. The team has been a contributor from day one and we are extremely glad to partner with them. To start supporting Chainx, we are running a validator node in their parachain. Together with Chainx, we will cooperate in research with regards to staking, governance, and Acropolis project to support the Polkadot vision, PokaHub. This is, of course, from the CTO of Acropolis. We hope that through the combined efforts of Acropolis and Chainx, developer adoption in the Polkadot ecosystem will be able to grow faster without unnecessary overhead for the newcomers while leveraging the features that both the Acropolis and Chainx parachains will provide. So as you can see here, there is a ton of value being unloaded here. And it's not just the transfer of assets as Chainx is developing a Filecoin bridge. And of course, we know that Filecoin is decentralized data storage and part of the Polkadot network. As the developer states, Chainx is an interchain asset gateway with an aim to attract more interchain assets. We want to build a Web 3.0 ecosystem where all blockchains are interconnected and value are freely transmitted. Filecoin may become the infrastructure of all blockchain projects. Storage problems can be solved by IFPS technology in the Filecoin network. This is why Chainx is connecting to Phil. So essentially what they're saying is they're bridging to Filecoin because one of the assets that we care about the most is our data. Having access to the Filecoin decentralized data storage network will be a must here in the Polkadot ecosystem. This goes beyond money. This goes to creating a true Web3 infrastructure. And you can see Chainx is the bridge between all of these critical components. Chainx is at the forefront of the market in the field of interchain decentralized assets. Technically, XBTC, which is the asset that you receive once depositing BTC into their bridge, is a combination of highly decentralized light node sidechain relay and notary schemes. Chainx uses Wasm technology to implement Bitcoin light nodes for the first time. It supports POW verification and complete transaction proof verification of the Bitcoin block header, making the interchain in the direction of Bitcoin to Chainx completely decentralized and Bitcoin style security. And as we can see here, the amount of LBTC lockup is over 9,000. Cue the Vegeta memes. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? And as we can see, their S-dot mappings is almost 1.5 million. The amount of PCX issued is coming in close to 6 million. And the rates for PCX lockup for voting is over 80%. So you can see here, they have exciting staking rewards. We know how you DeFi heads like your staking rewards, guys. They have an amazing amount of Bitcoin locked up, over 9,000 Bitcoin. Someone get the calculator on that. 
That means they almost have $100 million of Bitcoin locked up in this network, guys. This is not a joke. This is not a drill. That means that they have almost as much Bitcoin volume going through them as REN. And if you're asking why that figure is significant, it's because, hey, look, REN VM just on August 1st announced that they surpassed $100 million USD in total volume in just over two months. And yeah, cool. Maybe ChainX is a little older than them. But if $100 million is a significant amount of volume for you, then let's just take a look at these prices. Because right now, Chainx's market cap is just 27 million. And if we go to Ren, we can see that their market cap right now, their market cap is 260 million. 26 million, 260 million. There's an easy 10X here, and I'll leave it up to the audience to decide where it's hiding. Now, pretty much the only negative about this coin is it's only listed on Hotbit and MXC. Now, MXC is a no-go, even though they're the highest volume market in the whole place. That's because we've had reports of users not being able to withdraw their funds. So I will not recommend for you to go on MXC until they resolve the XOR issue that they've had with another parachain, which is Sora, which is also part of the Polkadot ecosystem. So if you guys are looking to trade this, I highly recommend you guys go to Hotbit. I had a new account, so it has a 20 24 hour hold until you can withdraw your funds. So I haven't done it yet, but I talked to a lot of people who said that they had no problems using this exchange and that they highly recommend. I'd really appreciate it if you use my referral link, which is linked in the description. By far their most liquid market is USDT. So you either want to deposit USDT or you can flip it from Ethereum or Bitcoin into USDT right here on the exchange. I ended up depositing Ethereum and then buying it with USDT because there was just a much more active order book there. Now, the wallet that I think is the best place to store this because it's not an ERC-20 and it's not on a lot of these common wallets. The best wallet here is the Math Wallet, which is on iOS and Android. It's a really awesome, incredibly easy to use mobile wallet. Just search for Math Wallet in your app store, whether it's Android or iOS, and it'll be very easy for you to find. And so as soon as you buy these PCX, I encourage you to get them off the exchange and put them in your Math Wallet for extra security. Everything I've heard about Hotbit has been very positive. However, I don't like to leave funds on exchanges like this. So to recap, sign up for Hotbit, get this PCX through their USDT market, and then when you withdraw, I would do it to the Math Wallet, which is an awesome mobile wallet for your iOS or Android device. My next huge bet in the altcoin space is PCX. And I believe that this is a coin that could be at the ground level, a foundational piece of infrastructure in the quote unquote protocol disruptor that is Polkadot, home to amazing titans of the space, such as Energy Web Token, Chainlink, and more. Chain X is going to be one of the most important resources in bridging assets and data both in and out of the Polkadot ecosystem where they can then begin to move like water for zero cost and an incredible user experience. It's no secret why Polkadot is looking like it's ripe to disrupt the incredibly congested world that is Ethereum and other legacy protocols. If Polkadot is successful in pulling off its mission, and I certainly believe it will be, given all of the hype, all of the testing, all of the phases, all of the genius that's gone into creating it, we have nothing but high hopes for what Polkadot and their parachains will accomplish. And of all of the Polkadot ecosystem partners right now, I'm personally looking to buy the most of PCX because I see it as the most undervalued. Not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I encourage you to do your own research. But the more I dig up about Chainx, the more excited I become about what this token will provide. And of course, with the success of the Polkadot ecosystem, the hundreds of billions of dollars that are housed both in Ethereum as well as on Bitcoin will need to find their way into the Polkadot ecosystem. And they're gonna do that with Chainx. So what do you guys think? Are you excited by this Chainx interoperability bridge that's not only bridging Bitcoin, but also Ethereum, Zcash, and all types of data? And we can assume a whole lot more types of assets as well. Obviously, it only being on a few exchanges makes it pretty exciting. I believe this thing is one good listing away from going absolutely skyward. They just haven't been paying the listing fees because they didn't do an ICO. They don't have millions of dollars in deep pockets to essentially pay off these exchanges but they built great tech. They're being universally acknowledged by other Polkadot ecosystem partners as pioneers in the space. And for that reason, my hopes for what could happen with this PCX token are sky high. So if you guys enjoyed learning about why I'm so bullish about PCX and the Chainx ecosystem, do me a favor, take your forehead and smash that like button because I believe PCX is an absolute diamond that is yet to get its time in the light. If RenVM as a bridge at 100 million US dollars 
is so highly valued compared to Chainx, then I think we have not only an amazing narrative, not only an amazing niche, but we have an amazing point of comparison showing that this alternative asset is just as valuable and I believe is destined to swell dramatically in the coming days and weeks as the Polkadot ecosystem starts to truly take flight. If you guys like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe and make sure you hit that bell notification because I'm publishing at all kinds of hours of the day. The information comes in when it comes in and the videos go out when they go out. And so if you want to know when I put out these videos, you need to put that notification bell on. As always, my name's Elio Trades. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it brought you a ton of value. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you very soon on the next episode.